All right, so um, today we're going to be replacing a uh, brake, a brake assembly on our fifth wheel. Um, I've got my beautiful assistant and wife with me today, who I'm going to be teaching how this uh, how this works, and I'm um, just going to video the whole thing so that hopefully you can learn if you're looking to do the same project um, or figure out how how to do this. So. I'm going to go ahead and put this on my head. Um, I've got a head strap here, so I'm not going to touch it because there's a lot of grease involved in this process. And um, we'll just kind of talk through it as we go through, and I'll explain it to you. And um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll post this online once we uh, once we get it done. So we go ahead and install this. We'll hopefully cut out um, some of the boring stuff. There are some um, longer uh, some sections that take some time so anyway this is the uh the tire that we're going to be working on today on uh, here's my new brake assembly over here uh you always got to make sure you get the right the right side the um the arm here is uh the arm it's real wide view don't go too much down the arm here needs to point to the front of the coach um for the uh the appropriate side typically they're also marked which um which side it says r for uh, right hand side there so so this goes inside that whole thing there and we're going to go ahead and replace this and repack all the bearings and everything so that it um so it's all freshened up we're doing this because the um the brakes currently have been um they got grease in them and uh grease on the pads and i couldn't get them clean enough so we just decided to replace all the brakes to hopefully improve the braking performance on this it's a 2010 cyclone um uh, with obviously three three axles on it so so um first thing we need to do is remove the chocks and jack up the uh, jack up the 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 axle um technically you're not supposed to actually just jack up one you're supposed to uh jack up the entire unit but on such a rig like this it's almost impossible to do and as long as you don't lift it too far off the ground it's not unsafe to do just one at a time. Yeah. Don't move your head around too fast. That might be hard to do. Well, it's it's it is what it is. <laughs> I'm just gonna do the job, and we're gonna see how it turns out. <clears throat> so, yeah, they're not gonna be able to see exactly what I'm doing, but so what I am doing here is um. Can uh, I need these guys? These are the uh, things that actually jack jack this up. So, could you hand me the jack stand there? What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna position this underneath here, uh, like so. But I will try to uh, keep my head more steady, remembering that you're watching from the top of my head here. Uh, yeah, but that's not, not really going to work out too well. I need to, uh, I got it on the super view setting, so they're seeing a really wide angle. So here's the brake assembly that we're actually removing. You can't really get under here, but um, you'll see it once we get it off. So I'm just going to take a little bit of pressure off the tire right now, and I'm going to set up this jack stand under here as well as our safety. So if it did crash down, that would catch it. So we take a little bit of pressure off the tire with the jack, um, and now we need to break the uh, axle loose. So, ugh. it's not much fun crawling under there. I've already got the right size tool here for loosening these axle nuts on um, a uh, breaker bar. So we just need to get it on there and break each one of these loose. Uh, it didn't fit on there real well. Uh. One, two, it's good to break these loose in sort of the star pattern, <clears throat> same as you would tighten them. Oops, it slipped off there. <clears throat> so right now we're just loosening them, and then, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and jack it up further. 
once we get these all loosened up a little bit. So I think I've loosened them all now. All right. So now I'm going to bring this up off the ground so the wheel spins a little bit. Okay. And now we loosen them further. Now if you want to come down here and help me just start spinning these off, let's get them all loose. Start with the top ones there. So we're actually going to be using a uh, Redline CV2 grease, which is uh, a really, really high temperature, power, uh, good grease to use. And the idea with this is that we won't be, uh, we won't be greasing it regularly. Probably won't need to grease it until the next time we do the brakes, which will be a couple years out. All right, so there's the tire. We'll just set this over here. Screw. Yeah, we need to fix that. Me too. Okay, so um, now that we got that off, uh, we can go ahead and take a flathead screwdriver. Oh my gosh, I was just needing a finding Phillips, and now I got a ton of them. So um, a Phillips head screwdriver and a hammer. Flathead screwdriver and a hammer. We're going to remove the grease cap here. Just sort of tap around it a little bit. You see it start to come off there. Once you get that off, you just sort of turn, turn the, um, turn the screwdriver to the side, and she'll just sort of pop right off. You want to wear gloves for this one? Yeah, I'll need gloves in a second. You don't have to wear gloves, but. Um, it's, uh, this is a messy task, so. Come on, get this all the way around. I got some in the toolbox here. Okay, so there's the, uh, the grease cap. Next, you get in here and you'll see that uh, we've got a cotter pin right here and this castle nut. And this castle nut's actually what holds the entire assembly on. So we need to remove this cotter pin. I'm gonna go ahead and put some, some uh, gloves on. I'll handle most of the grease, but once we get to cleaning the bearings, I'll probably put in, uh, put you in some gloves and get you to help me out. So, all right. Could you grab me a pair of needle nose pliers right there? So you're gonna have a, uh, a piece of towel ready. You're gonna try to keep most of your parts and pieces relatively gravel and dust free once you get in here because you really don't want gravel and dust inside your bearings it'll just chew them up real fast so I'm actually gonna sort of wipe the needle nose off too well we're gonna clean everything here in a second so now these ones actually have pretty good grease in it I redid these last year but we just weren't seeing the braking performance with the uh, whoops with the uh, the brakes so we decided to go ahead and replace all of them we just tried to clean them up, but it just didn't work. <clears throat> there was too much grease in them. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> ah, lovely. Okay, so there's the cotter pin. And now the castle nut should just come free. And then there's a retainer washer right behind that. So at this point, how I like to just get it off, um, if we just take another paper towel, I typically, you, you can try to pull this out and there's a bearing right behind it, but it kind of usually gets stuck because of the grease. So I'm going to just put a, um, one of these towels right over it and, um, and then sort of pull on this and the, the bearing and the, the washer will just fall out my hand as this comes off the hub you're going to want to make sure to kind of like lift so you don't 
scratch anything. So there we go. So there's the uh, the brake. And this one actually, look at that. It's grease free. We did a good job of um, the the um, bearing seal right there. Kept the grease out. So uh, could you grab me the bucket? So I'm going to go ahead and lift this off here like that. Oh, geez. Lovely. Right in the gravel where I didn't want it. Well, we're going to get that real clean here in a minute. Could you take this stuff out of here? All right. And that's a little bit of gasoline. We're going to use that in just a second. So I typically set this in there and use that as a, a workbench. So this is still going, right? Red blinking lights? Yep. Good. Okay. So here's the axle. There something in there. Yeah, we'll get that out in a second. Here's the axle, here's the original brake. You can see it's glazed with grease on there and uh, just not working properly. So grease, you know, there's still grease on this. I couldn't get it clean enough. So we're just gonna replace it and hopefully have better braking performance overall. All right, so uh, even though this is pretty clean, we're gonna clean it some more anyway. I actually got some grease on there already. You really want to use gloves for this part because we're going to be working with some gasoline to clean it. But here's the inner bearing and here's the inner race and we need to get this out right here. So the only way to get it out is to tap it out from the inside. So um, I'm going to take that out. I'm going to flip this over like so and set it on this five gallon bucket. This is a 12 inch. Um, a 12 inch drum and it fits real nicely on a five gallon bucket so i like to use it as my uh my workbench and then you need a tool this is just a standard um tire uh lug nut uh tire iron thing i don't know what you call this uh cross and you see in here you want us to come over and look at this you see that that's the inner bearing mm -hmm. you see how it moves around a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap on that with this around and then it's going to knock out that um, that race and it's going to fall into the bucket. Okay. So, so I just set this in here and you got to make sure to set it on the bearing. Um, but I don't like to just whack it too hard with this directly. So I use a, um, a piece of wood because it just kind of softens the blow. So we're going to sort of whack all the way around and it's going to just push on that bearing race until it falls in the bucket. Get a better grip on this sucker. There we go. All right. So that just fell in. I'll get some of the grease off of this. Not too worried about that. So, um, I'm going to remove this for a second and grab my bearing. So there's the inner bearing. That's what most of the load of the trailer rides on. And the bearing seal, which, uh-oh, looks like is damaged. Great. I had planned on reusing this, but we can't. I don't know why that is so incredibly damaged. Look at that. Would it have anything to do with the fact that you were whamming on it with that tire iron? Um, yeah, it's possible that the, uh, the bearing ran into it. Typically this doesn't happen, but I guess, um, shoot. I don't have any more. This was one of the new ones. Hmm. Hmm. I guess this job may have to uh, be completed at a later date. We can uh, we can go through and wrap up um, the cleaning out of it and the cleaning of bearings and everything but we can't reassemble it and grease it until we get a new bearing seal. This is what actually keeps the grease from getting, um, this actually sits on here like that nice and tight seal. And it keeps the grease inside here from getting out and into the brake area. Cause this, this is rotating. Um, well, this is, this is rotating and this spins as well like that. 
and uh, if grease gets into here it'll fling out on the bearing and get into the brakes and mess up the brakes uh, real good so um, typically you should replace these every single time uh, you remove them and I should have been prepared and had another set of these uh, I had six I'd used these two last year and I need uh, I need one more obviously so um, we can go ahead though and replace the brake assembly and clean up everything else put a bag over this to keep it dry and we'll come back tomorrow or the next day and uh, finish it up okay, okay? All right, so um, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to start cleaning the bearings. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you to put some gloves on. And uh, I'll show you how we clean the bearings. So um, You're breaking the buckles. Yeah. Uh, well, I work on cleaning out the... Uh, the brake drum. So, um, if you want to just maybe like grab a seat over here, because this is kind of a slow process, we'll start with the small um, bearing. Is that... have a seat over there. Yeah, here I'll just kind of show you how to how we do it, and then uh, and then I'll. Sit down? Yeah, I'll sit down here for a second. So. Um, so what we're going to do here is we just need to get as much of this grease out of the bearing as we possibly can. And you can really get a ton out just with paper towel, um, good shop towel, and, uh, and sort of rubbing on it. So you see right now it's really sort of sticky. It moves sort of slowly because there's a lot of grease in there. What I typically do is I first take the, the paper towel and I fold it into like a little ball like that. And I just kind of like get out most of the grease around the edge here. Like this. So um, I got a good chunk of it out, and then we take uh, we take sort of the clean areas on here, and we just start rolling rolling the bearing um, like this, and you kind of roll it until you like get the wheels to sort of spin, and you'll just sort of work the grease out, and you just do it all the way around, and eventually you'll start hearing it really sort of like feel up. You can let it kind of slip in your hand like that. Right? Mm -hmm. and you just kind of keep on working it all the way around and just keep cleaning it, keep cleaning it, and most of the grease will just work its way out. And then um, some people will actually use like a, um, like a solvent, like gasoline or something, to actually like soak it and get the grease out. I don't feel that that's necessary because we're going to use a grease packer, which actually forces grease into it and it's going to um, push the grease out the other side so it'll clean out some of the old stuff. So if you want to take over with this, just kind of spin and work and spin and work and just kind of do this until you feel that it's pretty, it's pretty clean. You can get a new sheet of paper if you need it. And then we'll move on to the, the large bearing as well. Okay. So over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to remove all the old grease out from the hub in here. You can see I accidentally got a little bit on the, uh, on the brake rotor here, but we're going to get that cleaned up in just a second. So. I'm just going to wipe out as much of this as I can in pretty good order. And this grease is actually pretty, it's really good shape because it was only used for a year. Um, and then, oh, I need a, uh, I need a paper towel, a grease holding bag. Let's stick it in this here. Greasy towel bag. You're gonna get as much of this out as possible. Oh, good here like this. Oh boy, I got a nick in my glove. So unfortunately these gloves are not the greatest and you gotta replace them when you're lifting these heavy chunks of metals pretty regularly because you'll tear them. Um, so, I already got a lot of the grease out of it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a new glove on. I got some more over here.
I really hate getting gasoline in my hands, so that's why we're doing this. The next step is to pour a little bit of gasoline into, come on, into this, uh, this drum here. A little bit sweaty out here, getting pretty warm. Um, oh, jeez. Break that one too. Yeah, it just ripped putting it on. Yeah, I'll try to dry my hand out. So we're gonna pour some gasoline into here and just kind of like scrub it around. If we actually had serious grease contamination in here, this would be really greasy, and you'd need the gasoline to get it clean. Um, but it, it's really not bad at all. I obviously got a little bit on here. You really want no grease in the drum uh, when you when you go to put the uh, the brake on it because your magnet rides on this section here and your brakes actually break on the outside and any grease in there will obviously hamper the uh, the performance of the brakes maybe i can cut out this section of video where i'm fighting with the gloves Good enough um okay so i need to grab another paper towel here how's that coming coming good when you got these bearings apart you really want to inspect the uh the spindle and the bearings to make sure there's no damage uh, i actually found one of the bearings that was damaged and had to replace it on one of the other tires so i'm going to go ahead and just pour a little bit of gasoline into this here not too much um just enough to sort of loosen things up and you'll see immediately that uh, you know black stuff kind of like really starts to loosen up and come off of it it's an incredibly good cleaner of a uh, grease so we're just gonna scrub that nice and clean and I actually go ahead and clean the inside with the gasoline as well because we do this now so that it has adequate time to dry before you put the new grease in it. Because if you put grease in it while there's still gasoline in here, it will um, damage the grease. So again, this one's really not bad. Sometimes it takes a lot of cleaning to get this drum clean, but we're still getting quite a bit of grease off it. See, it's turning black that and convenience of a bucket you can just push this down in the center there and it'll just fall into the bucket so there's that clean all the grease out of these So that there is probably about clean enough. Um, after I get it pretty clean, I like to take a little splash of gasoline and just put it right on the towel. And then just take this and sort of rub it around one more time. Okay, if you get little paper bits in here, um, I don't think it's really a big deal because they're not really going to damage the brakes, do anything. You just really want to make sure to get the gasoline and the oil out of it as best you can. So there's that. How's that bearing coming? I think it's good. Going good? Let's see. Can you really hear it? Yeah, you can hear it rattling. And it's, yeah, it's looking pretty good. So you can kind of test it by, um, by locking it so it doesn't spin and so you can only spin one of these at a time and take a cleaner sheet, cleaner section right here and just spin it on that. And if you don't get any grease or very little grease on it, then you're pretty, you're pretty good to go. I usually like to take a, a completely clean sheet actually because then you can really, really tell how you're doing. So that's looking pretty good. Yeah. 
looking very good. All right, so that one's clean. So let's set this on a clean surface. It's not gonna go on the gravel. And <clears throat> do it again. Thanks for getting it all in my hand. Welcome. Okay. All right, so since we, um, we're not gonna be able to reassemble it right now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean the grease off the spindle and replace the brake assembly itself. And then we'll come back at a later time to, uh, whoops, at a later time to reassemble the entire thing and, and, and grease, grease the bearings. I might have to come back without you. But we'll get it on video so you can see it. So I'm just cleaning this. So you can see here, this is actually, uh, this isn't a bearing buddy setup, but the idea here is that you can hook a grease gun up to this and force grease through the center of the spindle and it comes out this hole right here, which is sits like really close to the, 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 um, the grease seal. And the problem with this is that um, if you pump a lot of grease into here without spinning the tire pretty quickly, it will form a lot of pressure right next to that grease seal and it'll actually force grease right into the brake assembly and um, grease will get up in here and ruin your brakes and I think that's what happened with this coach um, so we're trying to avoid that and uh, my, I'm not planning to use this uh, ever again because of that problem so yeah expensive mistake um, it probably wasn't my mistake this is we bought this used um, and the dealer could have done it too. We've seen a lot of dealers that really just don't know what they're doing <laughs> when it comes to this. So, um, no, it wasn't very nice to say. I'm not saying that all dealers are bad, but, um, you know, they put these grease things on there and they're like, yeah, you know, it needs grease once a year, whatever, push it in there and damage the brakes and they don't even know it. And you don't even really know it until you're miles down the road. So, um, now we're just going to remove this brake assembly um, and put the new one on it. So <clears throat> what I need, I actually need to get into my uh, <clears throat> ratchet chest here. Not sure what size this is. Let's try a 10 millimeter. No, it's bigger than that. Maybe 12. 12 millimeter. No, it's bigger than that too. 14. I'm guessing it's millimeters. Nope. Maybe it's a half inch because it was real close to. Nope. It's even larger yet. So let's go up to quarter inch ratchet. Let's try a 15 millimeter socket. Nope. We already tried a 14, didn't we? Maybe that was the wrong size. Oh. Must be the wrong size up here. Hmm, that's odd. Well, 14 fits nicely. So, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this. And just remove these five bolts here. Yes, you can have your seat back, I'm sorry. If you can even see that since I'm <clears throat> and number five. All right, so we get all these loose. Broke this glove again.
there we go. I'll we'll set those aside and just pull and the brake assembly will just come right off. Now it is attached here by the electrical wires that I'm just gonna go ahead and clip with some wire cutters here. We're gonna clip them very close to their original um, points right there. There's the old one. Um, uh, how this works is that um, the, uh, the magnet here, so the tire is rotating like this, and the magnet actually gets, uh, when it's energized, it gets stuck to the, uh, to the inside of the drum right here. And it gets pulled to that, and it drags the magnet. It drags it along in the direction of travel. Um, so the tire is actually going this way. So it normally pulls it up and gets stuck to it, and it pulls it that direction. And what you can see happening here is it extends these brake shoes out and squeezes these against the inside of the drum and of course then causes a braking power and it's a much greater increased force than the magnet itself because it's uh it's dragging uh the tire it's, so the tire's motion is actually dragging it closed that's uh, the beauty of the drum brakes is it requires a very little force to actually um create a stopping power unlike uh disc brakes now granted there's a lot of advantages to disc brakes but um they're a slightly more complicated system so I am NOT going to actually hook up the wires to these uh, just now because um, actually I suppose I can um, it's five o'clock mm -hmm. so we need to get going soon Um, yeah, let me go ahead and, uh, and hook them up. So, I'm gonna remove these here. Am I still going? Yes. Okay. Can you tell the battery level on it? Uh, it's like one bar. Okay, so it's still got some power. All right, so... You're done with that? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you so much. So I'm going to come back at a later time and actually hook these up. I use a special waterproof connector that I, uh, I put on here and then I use a heat gun to actually melt it into place. Maybe I'll show that uh, at a later time. But right now, because we can't finish the job anyway, I'm going to just mount this um, new brake on there. Just basically like, um, looks very similar to the old one, except in better shape. I'm just going to stick it on there and it lines up. This is a 7,000 pound axle brake. Um, this is a very basic model. It just has the springs that hold um, hold everything together, and uh, a simple adjustment right here, which um, hard to show. But you uh, you spin this, and it pushes out on it. That's how you adjust the brake to uh, set it up to the the appropriate size on the drum. So we're just going to spin these into place. Could you see if you could find a um, a plastic bag. Sure. I think I've got some somewhere because we're just going to cover this with a plastic bag so that it keeps the rain off it. I believe it's supposed to rain tomorrow. I actually shouldn't have cleaned the grease off this so that it doesn't rust. So there's all five, and now we're just going to tighten them there. You do also want to make sure that you're not pinching the wires under here. I've made that mistake in the past. Right in behind it, you can pinch the wire up against the, uh, the axle. Cause yourself all kinds of headache. So you don't want to do that. Excellent. 
since your hands are all greasy, it does. Right here. Mm, are there any more? Uh, bags? Yeah. This is the only one I found. Okay. Are there... Is there a pump of them somewhere? I thought so, but I'm not sure. All right, so I'm sure there's a torque spec for these, but I couldn't find it. So I'm just hand tightening these to a pretty good click. You know, you don't want them, you don't want to strip them, but this isn't something that you're going to uh, warp. And these brakes aren't exactly uh, super true anyway. Whoops, knocking on stuff. So, just get this nice and nice and snug on there. They also have little locking grooves that kind of dig into the metal, so they should stay in place. Ah, all right, so there's that. Now we just need to uh, repack and reassemble everything with, of course, a new grease seal. So we're going to put that off to another day so that we can um, we can get a new grease seal for this. It's it's You never wanna put the old grease seals back in, unless, of course, they're in perfect shape, which that one is not. So um, we're just gonna put all this stuff in the back of the fifth wheel, and uh, we'll come back once, uh, once we're ready to finish it up. Okay, and we're back. Uh, I had to go and get this thing going down. Um, I had to go and get a new grease seal. Um, it's actually a couple days later. My wife is not with me now. But we're going to go ahead and finish up this install. So uh, I think, let's see, we've got the, the drums already cleaned. Most of the grease is out of it already. Um, what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and uh, pack the bearings. So they are, for the most part, clean. Uh, it's been cleanly. Uh, we're just going to pack them and push out anything else that's in there. Now, I like to use a bearing packer, um, which looks kind of like this. Let me get some gloves on. Uh, that allows us to fill the bearings with grease without having to do it manually. It's not hard to do manually. Um, the process to do it manually is basically taking the bearing, put some grease in the palm of your hand like this, and you take it and just push the bearing into your hand like that. It forces the grease through and uh, you fill the entire bearing that way. It's just a longer process and you don't always get the grease 100% filled. So. Um, you can pick one of these up for, geez, I think this one cost me like seven bucks. Um, even if you get it online, Amazon or something, it's still only going to cost you like ten. I just got it at a local, local auto parts store. So, so um, how this works is uh, going to um, you unscrew this top part here like that and we set the bearing that we want to pack in it we're going to go ahead and do the outer the inner bearing first uh, so then we can pack the drum and then rotate it around so you set it on there like that um, you want it to go this direction because the uh, this fits the conical shape here um, now what's what happens is you actually you pack the grease through this top spindle here and there's a little hole um, down here at the bottom uh, right there you can't actually really see it but the grease will come out there and then fill the bearing with grease and then push it um, all the way under uh, and out the uh, out through these holes um, actually it'll come up and then through this hole here and out because this will only touch on this outer ring so uh, what I like to do though is I like to since I don't have a ton of grease in the tubes. I get uh, just some uh, free grease. It's cheaper this way. And uh, we're just going to fill the inner bearing, the inside of the bearing, like this, with this grease first, just to get it started. Okay. 
kind of take your uh, your top part here and screw it on. Okay. Now we grab our grease gun. Make sure that you've got. Oh, geez, I hope that didn't just smudge the lens. Um, got grease in that top part there. And uh, you, or make sure that you use the same grease in the grease gun and uh, the, the manual stuff if, if you decide to go that route. I always like to keep the top on it, try to keep particulates, dust and such, oh geez, dust and such out since uh, grease won't really grab it. So now that we've got it all set up, unfortunately it's a bit windy today, which is not ever fun for this project. We're gonna go ahead and just start pumping grease into it. Make sure my gun's tight on there. And get it in there and we should be able to just start pumping grease. And we just pump it until we start to see it ooze out of the bearing. Right there. See it's starting to uh, to come out around the edges here. And I like to pump it, so usually you can see the old grease getting pushed out. Oh, geez, come on. So that's probably pretty good. Um, and now we can go ahead and I take my finger and I just scoop off of this grease. This is the stuff that's contaminated with the old. You remove it just like that and we'll just use this bag then as garbage so I'm just going to take this blob and stick it right in the bag like that. Ah, so now we can remove the grease gun. and remove our bearing okay so now we got a bearing full of grease and we got a whole bunch of grease on the inside at this point um, I like to take this inner grease here and um, smear it on the inside of the, the hub. You don't need a ton of grease inside the hub, but it's always a good idea to have um, some in there because it acts as like a reserve. If, uh, if the bearing starts to kind of run dry, the, when the grease gets hot, it, it starts to run, you know, it becomes a little more fluid and it will, um, in theory, work its way into the bearing and uh, keep it keep it lubricated because uh, bearings typically don't just fail on their own they almost always fail due to a lack of lubrication even if you get a little sand or something in there a lot of times they can survive um, but if they run dry then you're hosed so I like to kind of put that blob of grease in there and then go ahead and we just drop the bearing right in there like there Rotate it a few times, make sure everything feels good. It's all running smoothly. Very good. Okay, so now we're ready to put our grease seal in there. Um, I do like to take a little bit of the grease as well and uh, pack it on the inside of the grease seal so we've got grease on the other side. Now I'm gonna put some in in here. You don't need much. Um, just kind of smear it all the way around. Um, this will also help the grease seal. You also want a little bit on the inside ring here. Not much, just a tiny bit, because that'll actually keep the seal itself lubricated and help it form even a better seal to keep the grease out of your brakes. Rotor 
here. We'll go ahead and um, clean that in in a minute. Um, but I'm actually gonna before I I'm gonna take my hands off to, or take my gloves off to clean this. But I'm gonna go ahead and pack the small bearing first so that it's done and ready to go. So here's the outside bearing looking pretty good. Same thing as before. Set it on there like that. Take some of your grease. Oh, geez. Looks like we're good. Take some of your grease here. Fill it in. before we forced all the old grease out. You do waste some new grease doing this, and uh, it's really up to you. My gosh, I'm making a huge mess. Um, whether you do that or not, but that's uh, it's my preference to just try to get as much of the old grease out as possible. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can get my hands clean without um, removing my gloves. Clean enough to do this next part. and try to wipe this grease off of here somewhat so that it doesn't get on my drum. Okay. Now we need to put that um, put that seal back into place. You need to use something flat, clean. I typically just use a block of wood. And then just kind of like gently tap it. You, know, you kind of want it to be as straight as possible going in. pretty good. Again, I'll take this rag, clean up any extra. Okay, 
we've got the outer or the yeah the inner bearing um, the inner, inner bearing assembled we can go ahead and stick this back into uh, back onto the hub here um, actually I want to go ahead and clean this hub a little bit as well it's been sitting for a couple days just to get all the dust out of it <clears throat> Okay, so that's clean. So now we can take the hub, lift it up, and just set it on here like this. Now, hopefully, the brake is why it's set wide enough that it'll go on there cleanly. Sometimes the brake is set too wide when they're new. There we go, slid right on. So, you can actually feel that it's pretty tight. But, so that's on there. Again, there's no bearing on the outside holding anything in. So, looks like I didn't clean this out very well. We'll get the old grease out of there. Okay, so we got that out of there. The race is clean. Now we can go ahead and take our bearing. Again, I like to take the extra grease and uh, just smear it around on the inside here, just like we did before. take an extra blob of grease just pack it around in there in theory this grease should never go anywhere so as much as you put in now it should stay in there until you replace it next time um, the only reason it would go anywhere is if it were to um, leak out, come out of suspension, and actually leak out. So, that should be good. Now, um, we can go ahead and take our uh, retainer and washer. Get that cleaned up a bit. Just don't want particles in there. This doesn't really need grease. Go ahead and set that in there. Get your spindle nut and just get, oh boy, hmm, we'll get that in a minute. Get all the uh, 
sand and grit off of that so we're not putting that into the hub. go ahead and set the um, preload on the bearings and the preload is how much pressure there is basically on that nut that's pushing in and holding it on um, you don't want too much preload too much preload will cause the bearings to um, to wear out due to uh, just due to per too much pressure also when they get hot you know everything expands a little bit so it's kind of um, setting the preload. I've heard and seen it many different ways. Everyone has their own preference, basically. What I like to do is take a pair of channel locks and really tighten this castle nut up until it starts to feel a little bit of tension on the the the, the hub because it'll it'll actually um, okay. So that's tight there. What it's doing is it's squeezing the bearings, putting a lot of pressure on all those metal parts. So then I like to back off until it's like loose and uh, go one more, one more notch beyond where it loosens up a little bit. At that point, you should feel a little tiny bit of play. You hear that? That's okay. You don't want a lot. You just want like one. See, if, the, if I go here, it's too tight. So you go to the next one beyond it and you'll get that little bit of play and that's what you want. Then you put the uh, retainer pin in to actually hold it in place. Take your needle nose pliers, bend it around and that will finish up our job. Then you just reinstall the, uh, the grease cap on here and uh, put the wheel back on and off you go. So if you followed along to this point, I hope it's been helpful. Um, if not, well, then I just made this video for nothing. Okay, so to prevent that from going anywhere, you just want to make sure that I can't get into the bearing. <sighs> It's a heck of a project. Yeah, I've got one more break to do after this and uh, some wiring problems to address. And then, uh, and then this trailer should be good for the road. So again, um, hope this has helped. Good luck with your, with your trailer if that's what you're doing. And uh, check, uh, check some of my other videos if you got other trailer questions. I've got other... Uh, other insight on uh, on things that I've had to do with uh, with this trailer and other do-it-yourself videos. So I will go ahead and sign off, and uh, we'll see you next time. Feel free to leave me a comment if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them.